Hey folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on Fat Burning Man, where we talk about real food and real results. What's the first thing you think of when you hear the word mushrooms? Whether it's mushroom pizza, buttery portobellos, or psychonautics at Burning Man, mushrooms are the bomb. Even if you don't think much of mushrooms, they play an enormous role in our lives. In fact, you're probably breathing in mushroom spores right now. And did you know that the oldest living thing on Earth is a 2,000-year-old, 6,000-ton fungus just chilling in Oregon? Even cooler, there are more than 400 known medicinal mushrooms that heal everything from gut irritability to cancer. And today we're here with Terrell of Four Sigmatic to show you how to power up with mushrooms. Before we get there, I'd like to share a quick success story that just came in. This one is from Mark, and he just completed a challenge in the fat-burning tribe. Mark says, just a shout out to Abel and Allison who all work hard behind the scenes to make the Fat Burning Tribe work to help so many. This place and all you people are my rescuers from my lifetime of bad habits and my life is measurably improved and almost assuredly lengthened considerably. I set some very tough to reach goals and I'm only a pound or two shy of my goal of 48 pound loss over four months. I'm also wearing a pair of pants for the first time, which I bought seven or eight years ago, and never quite got small enough to wear. Next week, I'll dip into the 240s for the first time in over 20 years. Now pay attention to this part. This is where Mark gives his best advice for all the progress he's achieved so far. He says, my takeaway so far, be active. Eat fresh, delicious food that is as close to its natural state as possible. Eat lots of green leafy veggies and other fruits and veggies every day. Eat plenty of healthy fats and proteins. Eat when hungry and stop when full. Last but not least, don't stress over the details and be patient as this is a lifestyle, not a diet. Love you guys. Thanks for all your continued support. Congratulations, Mark. And your notes and takeaways are always right on point. So thank you for that. We eat clean, absolutely. But this is a lifestyle and we're definitely here for you. So if you're listening to this and you want to take your health into your own hands, check out the Fat Burning Tribe. We're kicking off our seven-day sugar-free detox challenge soon. So join the tribe right now to get in on the fun. When you join the Fat Burning Tribe, you'll get a new set of 30-day wild meal plans step-by-step step done for you every month. You'll never have to worry about what you're cooking for dinner again, and you'll also get workouts, exclusive giveaways, and live Q&A sessions with me and my lovely lady. If you're ready to start eating delicious food and shedding stubborn fat, check out the Fat Burning Tribe for a limited time discount at fatburningtribe.com. From any device, all you have to do is type in fatburningtribe.com, and I'll meet you in the members area. And if you just want to dip your toes into all of this, Get started for free, as always, at FatBurningMan.com. You can find over 200 of these Fat Burning Man shows completely for free, as well as my free newsletter and tons of great blog posts. So that's at FatBurningMan.com. Be sure to check that out as well. All right, on to the show with Taro, founder of the medicinal mushroom company Four Sigmatic. You're about to learn which four medicinal mushrooms you should be taking right now, how to cook a lion's mane, hint, lots of butter, what it's like to make raw chocolate from scratch, why Taro naps on a nail mat, and much more. All right, let's go hang out with Taro. All right, folks, I'm very happy to be here today with Taro, the founder of Four Sigmatic. Taro's on a mission to make medicinal mushrooms, some of the world's most researched superfoods, more accessible to everyone. Taro's company makes some of the best mushroom coffees, cocos, and elixirs I've tried. Taro, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me, Abel. It's my pleasure, and uh, I think we probably have to start at the weirdest thing I saw in your bio, which is the fact that you nap on a nail mat. So can, <laughs> can we just start there? <laughs> Yeah, uh, long story short, a couple injuries in soccer, had a lot of like lower back pain and uh, my best friend's dad was like into a lot of woo-woo stuff, like it was like the original biohackers. Yeah, yeah. And, and he met this like Eastern European Olympic weightlifter who made nail mats, which was kind of like, I guess, like the cure things like from India or something like that. Yeah. But he produced them, so I I definitely nap. I love napping. I'm a big napper. I don't always even fall asleep, but I love napping. Sure. And uh, I ca I travel with this like uh, portable nail mat. So here's like their actual nails. Like they're gonna wow. go through your skin. But I think it's pretty. You... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. 
it's like the Belarusian in the style of something like that. Yeah, but, absolutely. If you're only on audio, it's uh, it's got a nice color scheme. It's a, it's a, yeah. it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. A bunch of rusted nails sticking up. <laughs> yeah, well, they're super sharp, sharp though. So, yeah. But once you once you put a lot of the weight on a larger surface, it's mm-hmm. not going to pierce your back. Right. And then it's like acupuncture in a way. So it's like acupressure, and it's going to release the nervous system a lot. So yeah. So, Cool. It's one I've, I've tried it a few times, and it's one of those weird things where you're just like, "There's no way this is going to feel good at all." But once you kind of relax into it, you do yeah. feel your body start to respond in, in kind of cool ways, and uh, it works well on the feet too. I noticed, especially when I was living out in uh, in the desert for a short time, walking around barefoot in the desert is it can be a danger zone for sure. But your feet toughen up pretty quick, and you can tell yeah. that it's uh, there's something deeply human about that, don't you think? Yeah, totally. It's like the earthing element, but also yeah. the massage. And right. I mean, I, when I lived in Asia, obviously foot massage is the big thing. Yeah. And that's one of the things I miss more than anything else is like good foot massage. Right. And I, I, I don't I don't know. Is that fully true? Like the reflogically, like how they press certain parts sure. of the feet, but he feels good. Yeah. And I'm relaxed, so I like it. Yeah, it definitely does feel good. Actually, here's here's a quick little trick that I haven't even shared on this show, but especially if you're looking for uh, a massage... Uh, that you haven't scheduled in advance or you don't want to pay like 150, 200 bucks or whatever, we usually go, especially for traveling, to reflexology places uh, because usually they can get you in really quickly. It's not that expensive. And uh, the foot and and the like cranial massage that they give you is so fundamentally different from a lot of the, uh, I don't know, the freeze di- freeze-dried franchise type massages that you get yeah. where people are just kind of, squishing well, you a little bit. I think it's like a research pipeline as well. It's like yeah. we started with organs and blood and then we got into the nervous system. And mm-hmm. when I started studying through my mom, like nutrition, we didn't know much about the brain. Like we yeah. thought if you have a class of red wine and you kill your brain cells, you never get them back. And right. that's not actually true. Mm-hmm. But like then the 90s was the big decade of the brain. And now we're entering like the nervous system and the gut biome part mm-hmm. and it's i think it's just an evolution but like i feel like if you take a traditional massage it's a lot about the muscles whereas if you if you like neck is so sensitive when right. somebody just like it's a lot of nervous system stuff mm-hmm. and and that's i think for stress management and weight loss as well through that i think it's pretty huge so definitely yeah. take that so so treat yourself if you're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> this, is, this is your excuse but anyway yeah. let's uh let's get into a bit about mushrooms because uh, one of my favorite things about growing up in New Hampshire is that my mom and dad learned how to forage for mushrooms. So we'd go out and get chaga sometimes or those big lion's mane that we just rip oh, out of the woods and, uh, you know, come come back and just especially the lion's mane fried up in some butter. It's just so delicious and such a wonderful and rare treat. A lot of people, especially in America, I know you didn't start here, but you, you've recently come over to America uh, a lot of Americans are totally missing out on this whole world of of mushrooms, the medicinal side, the culinary side. So um, why should we care about mushrooms in general? Yeah, I think Anglo-Saxons and Americans in general are pretty, been pretty mycophobic. And there's yeah. probably historic reasons for that, which are, it's a far, far, you know, long, long time ago. But the uh, rest of the world is a little bit more mushroom friendly. Mm-hmm. But uh, why should we care is because we need them. And they're like i i could go on for hours and hours but they're so vital for this planet and for mm-hmm. us like let's take the earth part 25 percent of the earth biomass is fungi mm-hmm. all pretty much all plants require mushrooms to grow like that's pretty huge yeah and they were the first thing to come from the ocean to the dry land and they started eating rocks you know that was so they're really paleo yeah. 1.3 <laughs> billion years ago like they're really paleo right uh and so they're important for the earth. They can like decompose uh, oil and mm-hmm. diesel and they can even like eat plastic. That's the raddest part. But right. from a human point of view, we're way, way, way closer to mushrooms than we are to plants. So there's a lot of similarities. So we share, depending on the mushroom type, 30 to 50% of the same DNA wow. with mushrooms. We share 80 to 85% of the reposomal RNA, how we synthesize proteins. Mm-hmm. So how we process proteins is so similar with mushrooms. They breathe oxygen like we do and expel CO2. They can produce food. They have to get it externally like human uh, animals. Yeah. So uh, because of this DNA similarity, we can get really sick from mold. Mm-hmm. I guess this is like the one big topic right now that people are getting into. 
Uh, bat gut biome as well can be related to different kinds of fungi, bad fungi. Mm -hmm. But we can also use the best kinds of mushrooms uh, for mushroom medicine. So I guess what you were alluding to is a lot of people think of mushrooms, they think of psychedelics or portobello mushrooms where it's actually a kingdom with roughly six times more mushrooms than there are plants in the world. So about right. 1.5 million different types of mushrooms estimated to be. So there's yeah. a lot more than just those two. It's incredible. And especially the first time that we visited Asia, we were stunned by how many different types of not just mushrooms, but really everything, fruits, vegetables that you've never seen before that look totally crazy. But you're right. In America, it's usually just those little white button mushrooms, portobellas, maybe shiitakes. Yeah. Um, but you also don't think of them as a food that affects you in a very specific way, whereas a, a, a lot of mushrooms do, right? They have a specific adaptogenic uh, response or, or effect over your body. So can you talk about that? How how are mushrooms used, not just in, in the culinary sense, but actually medicinally? Yeah. So so out of these estimated 1.5 million mushrooms, about 400 so far have been shown to be medicinal. So they produce a significant amount of medicinal, these metabolites they're used for. Uh, penicillin is the one that people know, but from, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, even cancer drugs in certain mm -hmm. countries are based out of mushrooms. But there's multiple different compounds that affect our body. I think the most studied ones are these polysaccharides called beta glucans. Um, you know, there's over a thousand research papers on them. Um, usually they're known for the immune system support. So they activate and modulate our own immune system. So macrophages, natural killer cells, uh, all this good stuff is protecting our cells from both when our immune system is low, when we might have an autoimmune type of stuff like it's hyperactive mm -hmm. but fascinating for the fat burning man is is that the <laughs> fact that these beta glucans have a very high molecular weight mm -hmm. so what they can work as a prebiotic and help gut biosis so like improve your gut biome there was a right. research coming out last year how uh this reishi mushroom can help alter your gut bacteria for the better mm -hmm. and also reduce like insulin resistance and lower inflammation, which is something that mushroom research have known a long time that a lot of these beta glucans get absorbed in the colon. But last year came a research kind of showing the benefits of that for weight loss, um, inflammation. Yeah. So they, they actually, obviously they do this test on mice, but they, they put the mice on a, on a high fat diet mm -hmm. and they put mice on a high fat diet and the other group high fat diet plus reishi mushroom mm -hmm. and the and the mice that took the reishi lost more weight wow. and then tested the mice that who'd taken the reishi and take take these fecal transplants to the ones that didn't so that's mm -hmm. like kind of what you often do in for people who are sick you take from a healthy gut biome to mm -hmm. a an unhealthy one and they started losing more weight so yeah I mean, it's pretty fascinating those studies are absolutely nuts now when you're talking about dosing mushrooms though it are they something that you can take every day? Do you have to be careful with them? What are the interactions for, for someone who's just getting into this? What, what do you have to say about getting started? Well, first of all, acknowledge the fact that you're already taking mushrooms in so many of your different products, good sure. or bad. Mm -hmm. So actually, as we're talking, you're breathing in one to 10 spores, so mushroom seeds, every breath. So you might breathe 300,000 spores per day. So your mushrooms are in you already. So yeah. But when we talk about these mushrooms, we talk, especially these medicinal mushrooms like reishi, chaga, lion's mane, cordyceps, mm -hmm. they're generally regarded as safe. So they have grass status. So they are food. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they're often sold in supplements and pills and people get scared of supplements and pills. Right. Mostly because they're very bitter. So when, if you take a pure mushroom product, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's going to be a little bit, especially the extracted ones that are dual extracted get mm -hmm. so bitter. Yeah. And a lot of the health beneficial compounds, those especially these triterpenes are bitter. So um, that's why they're capsulated because, you know, most Westerners yeah. like bitter. Because so. they can ruin a smoothie pr pretty quick. I've, yeah. yeah <laughs> I've they, done that a few times. Especially if you do like a fruit smoothie and you want like, ooh, <laughs> right. I want a smoothie, you know, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you can definitely destroy it. That's why they're awesome in like chocolate, cacao, coffee, right. when which are already bitter. But yeah, um, yeah so they are safe. Um I guess you can eat too many carrots, so, you know, in that sure. way. But those dosages are outrageous. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple contradictions that people don't talk with mushrooms. One is is, is people who are pregnant, obviously, uh, consult your doctor, mm -hmm. even though reishi is probably good during pregnancy and after. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the other one is people with antibiotics or anticoagulants is because yeah. those are usually based out of mushrooms. So it's taking 
pharmaceutical companies take these medicinal mushrooms, they isolate medicinal properties out of mm -hmm. them and combine them to get the, uh, some kind of a patent. And then you take this isolated synthetic form of mushroom uh, or an antibiotic, and then you take this whole food version. Yeah. And so that there's some risk there. But in general, they're, uh, unless they're on antibiotics, they're pretty safe on those. And you can mix and match them. You can take chalk in the morning, reishi in the evening, whatever. Right. So. Yeah. Um, why would you take individual types of mushroom, like chaga, for example, versus lion's yeah. mane, uh, or, or or some of the other ones? What are the specific effects that you're looking for when you take a specific type of mushroom? Okay, so uh, it can get really confusing in the beginning if you learn, start <laughs> to learn anything new. So yeah. there's a lot of information. You you don't need to know the 400 medicinal mushrooms. Let's start with like the four and we've already kind Unless of, you're picking uh, them from your yeah. <laughs> woods behind your house. Yeah. Even then, we can talk about that as well. But uh, Chaga, the king of mushrooms, Rishi, the queen, mm -hmm. lion's mane that we've talked about and the popular one with crossfitters, athletes is cordyceps. Yep. So let's just focus on those four. Uh, I kind of call them the four ninja turtles in a way that the ninjas and turtles, <laughs> awesome. meaning that they're medicinal mushrooms, yeah. i.e. turtles, and they're ninjas. And ninja means that they're good for your immune system and, and kind of through that your gut health. So mm -hmm. they're antiviral, antibacterial, and usually anti-inflammatory. So all of them do the same thing. They wear the same outfit, but yeah. they have their own special weapon. So it's slightly different. Um, so uh, chaga, for example, is probably gram to gram highest uh, source of antioxidants in the world, definitely highest in melanin, zinc. Mm -hmm. So great for skin, um, skin health and, and inflammation through that as well. Uh, Rishi is kind of more adaptogenic that you discussed, kind of helping you uh, reduce stress. It's kind of a calming, grounding yeah. uh, mushroom. So especially evening time before you go to bed helps with liver detox and through that also break down cortisol potentially. Mm -hmm. And lion's mane for the brain and the nervous system. It's one of the few foods that can help protect and repair your nerve growth factors, which is awesome. And then uh, cordyceps for your oxygen intake and adrenals. So people yeah. who may, you know, you know, maybe did too much coffee or have asthma or used to smoke or something like that, cordyceps might be a pretty interesting one. And I like the way that that your company puts the different mushrooms together in various functional ways. And I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you why because. You, the smoothie experience is one, right? There are certain types of, of add-ins that you could have uh, to a drink, say it's a supplement or a shake or something like that or or a smoothie that make it taste better or neutral, right? So like coconut flakes, they're not going to ruin anything. But yeah. there are other kinds of supplements like I've, I've tried a little bit of everything like powdered black ant, you know, like yeah. various types of mushrooms and, uh, you know, lots of things from Chinese medicine. And my lord, does some of those taste bad? And I think that that's it's a shame, right? Because it's a lot harder to take something that just tastes awful. California poppy is another one that I tried recently in tincture, and it made my mouth taste so bad that I couldn't eat anything for like at least a half an hour after that. Uh, so one of the things that I struggle with on a daily basis, anyway, is having the the habits that enable me to have the stuff that tastes bad uh, and, and take it knowing that it's good for me. But one of the things that you're able to do with, with your company, which I love, is that you put these uh, these medicinal mushrooms into coffees, into elixirs, into cocoa. And when you have them, some of them are sweet, some of them aren't. Um, but you can actually, you can feel the effect and you make it pleasant to consume these things, which isn't always the case, right? So which ones are, are your favorites? What's your favorite way to consume mushrooms? Well, first and foremost, thanks for that. That means sure. a lot. I mean, we've worked quite a long, many years with that. Oh, let me just let me just say this: I've tried other ones who have not been nearly as successful. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, props to you. It can't be I easier mean, than that. I also want to thank a lot of the people. Maybe some of them are listening that who followed us when we started out. We started like yeah. we're an employee owned, like a startup that we started self funded. Couldn't pay ourselves a salary in the beginning. So, a lot of the sure. feedback ideas came from our fans, including the mushroom coffee came oh, from really? a lot of our. Yeah, they wanted it, and then we just we worked on it, and cool. we've had definitely horrible ones. Yeah, <laughs> uh, all along the way. So, uh, so, and by the way, about the bitters and fat loss, just as a tip, or if you have kids, is like taking some of these tinctures, these bad tasting tinctures, just before a meal. Let's say mm -hmm. thirty minutes before a meal. If you have, if you're one of those people that have humongous munchies and whatnot, taking some kind of a bitter, uh, even a dropper or something like that mm -hmm. before a meal might help. Kind of like, you know carve out some of those cravings. Yeah, it recalibrates everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, 
about favorite products to use or what was the original Yeah, question? like just on a daily basis, how are you taking mushrooms? Um, how do you, how do you encourage other people to do that? Cause there is, you know, just kind of like suck it up and take it with a powder. But for, for me, myself, I like turning it into a ritual. And for example, I was yeah. telling you that I like, and, and Allison does as well, the lion's mane in the evening. Cause that's one of the sweeter ones. Yep. Um, just, just having that as a little nightcap is kind of like a, a tea slash supplement. Yeah. That's great to take in the evening. So that's one example of, of a way that I like to ritualize it to try to turn it into a positive habit that I enjoy. That's actually, you're touching upon one of the most important things in health, I think, is ritual. Mm-hmm. And I've, uh, when I started out, like, first people coaching in nutrition, like, 12 years ago or something like that, I definitely didn't get this. I was like, mm-hmm. you take it. You're like, this is good. You take yeah, it. Right. And maybe, like, that 5% of people will do it. Mm-hmm. But you, for the other people, you have to find, and I, I, I found that about myself as well, I have to build myself rituals. Mm-hmm. And it can be, re- that one of the biggest challenges in health sometimes. So that's why it's easy to start with things that come easy and there's a pre-existing ritual that you can upgrade. That's why, obviously, it depends how you live. But most people are not drinking mushrooms already, so right. it's not like an existing ritual yet. And actually, a lot of Americans don't drink tea either. They say mm-hmm. they want to drink tea, but they don't actually drink tea. Yeah. Um, so that's why if you're already doing your smoothie, or most commonly, coffee is probably the easiest way to start. So I think mushroom coffee has has become the California role of, of the mushroom world <laughs> in a way that... Abel, I don't know if your parents in, in New Hampshire may be a little bit more fist-friendly, but a lot of... Uh, a lot of the past generation would have not eaten raw fish, whereas yeah. our great great parents would have had that. But like, sure. like ah, uh, not raw fish. Yeah. So until, but the California roll it doesn't even look like raw fish. It's kind of like you're like it's a rice bowl, you right. know? Yeah. It's <laughs> so true. Uh, so mushroom coffee doesn't really taste like mushrooms at all. It tastes like a smooth. A, a good mushroom coffee will taste like smooth coffee, and you'll yeah. get some of those neurotransmitters activated, but it will be less lit, acidic. And if you use things like cordyceps, good for your adrenals. If you take lion's mane, it will support your brain the same way as coffee, but with mm-hmm. less caffeine. So mm-hmm. all the there's a lot of good stuff there. So yeah. that's probably step number one is is mushroom coffee for a lot of people. Now, do you yeah. see? Obviously, real food is catching on, and yep. uh, it's it's wonderful to see that. Do you think mushrooms will also catch on? Uh, speaking about the lion's mane, to use that example, I mean, it's it's so hard to describe what that's like eating it fresh from the woods and you know that yep. big flowery puffy thing and and how good it tastes do you see that winding up in whole food someday uh yes and i think the stats are already proving it um there's still some stigma around that and then mm-hmm. obviously the supply chain might not be optimized it's more optimized for veggies and there's other things sure. around that but yeah absolutely and i think what with the forever debate between vegan and paleo is like, should you eat animal protein? Should you not eat animal yeah. protein? Well, I guess like everybody can agree that if we can have a little bit more fiber mm-hmm. and and we talked about um, uh, prebiotics and the gut health and all that stuff. So like some of those meaty uh, meals comparing with something else and, and the mushrooms can be a great alternative, you know, you know, if not every day, a few times a week, taking chicken of the woods or taking maitake mm-hmm. or taking lion's mane and, and cooking it in butter and it will become this like meat like it's a lot it of them is. are used. I mean, they're, lion's mane is used as a meat substitute. A lot of right. you you can mistake a lot of these mushrooms for like chicken or, yeah. you know, uh, some sort of a, a seafood and and you can make a lot of like you can make an awesome lion's mane pot thai or stuff like that. So there's a, I think it's coming, and mm-hmm. and through that they're gonna get a lot of these medicinal properties as well. Yeah. Um. So I think it's it's definitely coming. So. I I love hearing that. Now, what about the the history? I, I know you're a big traveler. Um, the history of using mushrooms over the course of time. Uh, it seems like it's one of those things that we forgot, right? Like it's like so many of our traditions. Um. What are some of the things that you've seen humans use mushrooms for in the past? Uh, and it could be habits, ritual, culture, what have you, that that holds some promise for the future. Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much all indigenous cultures would have used mushrooms. Um, so obviously, um, you know, um, it's 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 people don't realize, but mushrooms are extremophiles. So wherever you live, there will be mushrooms. Usually, mm-hmm. they're underground. So when we talk about mushrooms, we actually talk about the fruit of the mushroom, right. it's kind of the fruiting body. Mm-hmm. Whereas the mushroom 
kingdom is fungi, and the fungi will have this mycelium underground. Right. Huge so, networks, generally yeah, speaking. Yeah. Right? I mean, 25% of the world, Earth's yeah. biomass. <laughs> I right. mean, it's, not, it's no joke. Get this. The world's largest organism is a 2,000-year-old mushroom living in Oregon, just chilling. In Oregon, huh? year, Yeah, chilling in Oregon. <laughs> chilling with Sasquatch, yeah. Yeah, the original hipster. Uh, <laughs> weighs over 6,000 tons. So 6,200 something tons. Yeah. And it's one cell level thick. So think of our skin. And depending who you ask, we have three to seven layers in our yeah. skin. And it has one layer. And it's survived. And it eats trees. It's eating these whole forests. It's just like one wow. way. So uh, but for human consumption, I think the most interesting story is obviously the original paleo guy is the Iceman Utsi that they mm-hmm. found. If you if you know the story of yeah. how they found him in the in Austria slash Italy on the border in the Alps and he was frozen, you know, and they checked out his gear, what's his setup, and he had two medicinal mushrooms. One was Tinder mushroom, which is not the app obviously, but it's like something to make fire with. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so these mushrooms can be used to carry fire and set up fire both. Okay. So they're a survival tool as well. And then he apparently had worms in his body and he used this perch polar bore, which is can help with worms and it's we talked about immune system and gut health. He was already like into the, you know, the whole gut biome thing before there was, he was the original biohacker in a way. Right. He was like, <laughs> Some issues there, got to get the birch bowl for in. Yeah. So these are just examples. A lot of the medicinal mushrooms grow on trees. Both of these mushrooms would grow on a tree. And that's also a people, what people don't realize. And, and these tree, tree mushrooms don't tend to be poisonous. So uh, pretty much like in Finland, all the poisonous mushrooms are ground mushrooms and mm-hmm. none of the polar bores are poisonous. So, mm-hmm. Although chaga isn't the most appetizing thing when you see it on the tree, right? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. And a lot of these aren't actually. It's when you, you got to appreciate it though. Like yeah. I guess lion's mane is very beautiful. And then another it one is. is probably the easiest and safest to start forging if, if somebody there listening is really into that is turkey tail. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really easy to spot. You can find it pretty much anywhere in the U.S. Uh, can't go wrong with that. And, and it, that's actually pretty beautiful. It looks like a little rainbow. So. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I, I remember eating some of those too. And you write about the meat substitute thing. It's so much better than tofurkey and all those fake oh, meat gross. substitute <laughs> things. Yeah. When you have a, a fresh mushroom, you cook it up in, uh, well, we usually do butter. But I guess if you're doing the vegan thing, probably some some other cooking fat. But it does. It has that... Uh, not spongy, not rubbery, but it's got some resistance when you're biting into it, and it's very satisfying. And then it has the umami too, which which brings oh, totally. wonderful flavor. So let's let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about how to cook with mushrooms. What are your favorite yeah. ways to use mushrooms to improve the flavor of of various dishes? That's yeah, that's super important. You have to understand that you cannot eat these mushrooms raw. So mm-hmm. even the hardcore raw vegans would have not had medicinal mushrooms raw. It's something that they would have cooked because they. Mushrooms, one of the similarities with humans, or not humans, but animals, is, mm-hmm. is the chitin, which you can find on the shell of a lobster or, or something like that. It's a substance we cannot digest. We lack this enzyme. And especially these three mushrooms, which are part of the inedible group, mm-hmm. but also these edible culinary mushrooms, you have to cook them. It also removes a lot of the toxins in certain culinary mushrooms. Um, but you have to cook them. So soups, that's why some people drink them as a tea, but um, the most common way is sauteing with the fat. And the fat will unlock a lot of the medicinal properties. So mm-hmm. mushrooms have two types of generic health benefits. Um, one is these water-soluble polysaccharides that we discussed, these beta-glucans. Um, good for the immune system, good for the gut health, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we have these fat-soluble compounds that usually you tincture with alcohol, but you can also use lipids to get, get them. And these are usually these like Petulinic acid in chaga or triterpenes in reishi, but in general, these fats will help extract a lot of those good things in them, and they also make them usually taste better. So that's why a lot of top chefs are cooking with you know oils. So yeah. beat a coconut oil, beat yeah. an avocado oil, but I would say that pretty much for any mushroom lover, the butter is the thing. So yeah. I guess you approve, but like getting good French butter, putting that uh, with mushrooms, it's I mean that's pretty pretty awesome. So but um, in general, you want to. Give them some heat mm-hmm. uh, in any form, and you want to give them some fats. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the way to do it. And butter, man, you just can't go wrong. I keep going back in my mind, remembering what it was like to eat those mushrooms, and it's been it's been quite some time. Um, but on a daily basis, 
Are you cooking them up yourself? Are you drinking the teas? Like, how are you actually consuming them yourself? Well, I, I travel a lot. So mm-hmm. it's also, you got to keep that in mind. The second part is that I live next to the Santa Monica Farmer's Market. I have access to all this cool stuff. Awesome. And there's yeah. actually awesome farmer's market pretty much wherever you go. And I guess you've been you've been on the road as well. So you've sure. like firsthand seen these. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not going to write. I have to be honest, like do a lot of the grocery store mushrooms freak me out big time. Even the good types like shiitakes freak me out. I don't know where they're coming from and all that huh. stuff, how long they've been there. Yeah. What, what do you mean by freak you out? And the mold factor in okay. them. So even though the best mushrooms are, get this, like a lot of people think that, oh, I have candida, I can't have mushrooms. My doctor mm-hmm. said that's not actually correct. A lot of the best mushrooms are antifungal. Mm-hmm. And they help with healing the gut, but also <clears throat> in general, like reishi is awesome for people who have candida. Yeah. But <clears throat> they will once, especially these more fleshy ones, they can collect other mushrooms on top of mushrooms. Mm-hmm. So they will like coat them with certain molds and stuff like can happen. So that process is just so unstable. Um, unless I know where I'm getting it or I'm getting it from a farmer's market, I, I don't really go for like, I'm not going to like Walmart or Target to buy mushrooms for sure. So, gotcha. um, so that's why I use a lot of them on the go. Um, mm-hmm. before, before I started this company, I was just like buying mushroom capsules and opening them into my Vitamix and whatnot. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So annoying, but you got to get it done. Yeah. Um, so I usually consume them in beverages of various, but, uh, a few times a week, I try to cook with them. Um, just did some sweet tooth mushrooms and stuff like that. But cool. I think that's more of like once you're, once you're in it, once mm-hmm. you really, when you want to explore. I don't have everybody always keeps quoting that Americans eat fifteen or thirty foods per year. I don't know where that stack comes from, but right. I believe it's not that much. Yeah. So just just getting few mushrooms into your diet. Um, most people will probably agree that having diversity in your diet is good. So adding a few of the mushrooms into your diet is probably useful. And if you look historically, a lot of times mushrooms have been used in preventative medicine, which is something another thing that we've forgotten. Right? Yeah. The, the whole idea that you can prevent some of this stuff from happening. So it's it's one of those things. It can be a hard sell, right, where you take the same things most days over the course of your life. And all of a sudden, when you're 80, you don't have cancer. It's it's not like one of those, oh, I'll buy that type yeah. things, right? So what do you do to help encourage people to to build those little habits that might show up as a disease not manifesting, if that makes sense? Yeah, that's the, that's the big bummer when I started working with mushrooms and try to educate people because most of the research then, I mean, still is, but then especially was focused on the immune system. And people just mm-hmm. don't give a damn right. about the immune system well, it's just until they sick. get sick and sick. then that's it's the everything point. Right? that's my yeah. whole point is like they only care when they have a flu or a cough or be worse they have a cancer or they have an autoimmune or now i have crohn's disease i yeah. have ms disease i have arthritis now i care about my immune system well you know maybe you should have started before because it's like kind of like boot camp mm-hmm. so these mushrooms will kind of like irritate a lot of these internal protection officers in our body and you need to take them on a fairly regular basis. So they're tonic. So the longer you take them, the better they get. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, I haven't been sick one day in like seven years. Wow. Not to say that it's just because of mushrooms. There's other factors as well. Mm-hmm. But I, when I was running and I was doing long distance running, I got this nasty mycoplasma. Like the, and, and doctors, like the first three doctors didn't know what it was. They was like, ooh, just like antibiotics. And that was the last time I got them. Yeah. And they just like nuked them. And then I, the first second I went and it didn't work, the first antibiotic. And they were like, ooh, I chose the wrong antibiotic because it can be any of these 10. I just guessed like, <laughs> cool, <laughs> you know, like never again, you know. <laughs> so this is like, okay, I got I to gotta take this like an insurance policy, isn't yeah. so, Like building those, just understanding that, that's super vital and also understanding that good immune system is related to your skin health mm-hmm. that is related to your weight loss mm-hmm. that is related to a lot of other things that you might care a little bit more even your hormonal health so um just understanding that connection and understanding that you'll look sexier and you'll, you'll be more lean and whatever if you if you take care of your immune system but yeah. for the habits is finding something that you can go with some people can take that you know uh a more bitter mushroom. Some people want to cook it. Some people want to have the coffee. Some people want to have the hot cocoa. Some people want to take the mushroom lemonade. Mm-hmm. You know, there's other ways of like, and I mean, there's more and more coming, but find the way that works for you. Take even small amounts uh, and try to take them 
almost daily of finding a way of adding same way as you want to add good bacteria to your diet even yeah. on small amounts on a fairly regular basis you want to add some part of this fungi kingdom into your diet so having something from every kingdom is probably yeah. useful uh, versus going like hardcore for a week and then stopping so right yeah which is the temptation for <laughs> a lot yeah. of people in health you know it's the bright shiny object whereas it really should be about the slow burn right? yeah. it should be about like I those mean, little things long term as long as as amazing as mushrooms are they're not you know cure all but mm -hmm. they're i can tell you that mushrooms and bacteria have suffered from food racism so just in court, so many people have not taken them so you can get a really noticeable result really quickly by incorporating some of these mushrooms in most cases sure just because you, you haven't had them your body is kind of craving for those compounds and needing those compounds so unlike with some herbals that you have to take six eight weeks to notice anything yeah sometimes you take cordyceps or reishi for the first time and in 10 minutes kind of you you feel it uh it can yeah. happen to a lot of people not to say to everybody but a lot of people i've seen is like the first time they think i was like whoa right. what's going on <laughs> For, yeah first time i took cordyceps and and knew what it was i was like i can definitely feel that and, and there aren't yeah. many you know honestly especially when you're talking about nutritional supplements herbs uh, mushrooms things like that there aren't that many things that you can take where you actually feel it definitely as not. you're taking it or after you're taking it so it, it's not. a very cool thing if you guys haven't tried a lot of these mushrooms it's definitely worth looking into but let's uh talk about something else that i know you're really interested in the raw chocolate so I, I love chocolate. It's almost a daily thing for me. Tell me about what you do with chocolate. You know, that's kind of like the hack um, with like coffee. Is like find a way that is fun, exciting. It's so mm -hmm. much easier. Even even though I live and breathe the healthy lifestyle, it's just yeah. so much easier when it's fun. Right. And and it's also when it's social. So I try to invite people to make healthy desserts. Like right now, I've been on this like craze of doing like these fat burning sugar-free desserts of all kinds and chocolate is just the most fun one yeah. um <laughs> i just made one with kind of vanilla gooseberries and muirapuama wow. which is like an amazonian aphrodisiac herb yeah um so i did that i usually always put a little bit of mushroom extracts there i used our we have this dead mushroom blend that i put on um and and yeah i mean I keep it really simple. I don't, I don't temper them at home. I don't do anything like too crazy. I've mm -hmm. done that. I, you know, but it's too much work. I just like um, melt uh, cacao butter. Sometimes put a little. I now I have like I put MCT oil there, but sometimes I put a little bit of coconut oil to make it a little bit kind of creamier, milkier. Sometimes mm -hmm. I put tocotrienols that will also make it creamier, and milkier. But it's pretty simple, you know. Um, any kind of sweetener to your choice. You know, be it something that doesn't spike your blood sugar or using honey. Honey is awesome if you can handle it, obviously. Yeah. A little bit of salt. And then I just put like medicinal stuff in and uh, like I just hide them there and I don't even <laughs> notice. <laughs> and, and then yeah. I usually, um, I don't know, do you eat a lot of nuts yourself? Not, not tons, but I enjoy them, yeah. Yeah, I, I at, at one point I was eating a lot and definitely didn't vibe it. And I don't, I don't eat them at almost at all, but they yeah. work really well with, with chocolate, I think. So oh, I put yeah. like I pistachios at the, at the farmer's market. They had this guy selling these pistachios. So I put them there and then certain berries, like I now I put these gooseberries, but they can, and mulberries, mulberries are probably my favorite. Yeah. Mulberries are the best. Yeah. Oh man, with chocolate, <laughs> it's not even fair. But it's 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 awesome. <laughs> I take it as a snack in between meals. Yeah. It's like just like especially when if you if you don't if you keep the sugar low and mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's just such an easy slow release, good vibes right. thing. And then also the magnesium when you travel a lot, you do a lot of sports and all that stuff is mm -hmm. like it's a great way of getting some of those minerals and trace minerals in. So yeah, it is. Now um, we're we're coming up on time here, but. There's so much that we, we could talk about all this stuff all day. But is there anything else that you want to share from a lifestyle perspective? A lot of people, especially, you know, <laughs> th there's a tendency to say, I'm too busy for all of this nonsense, right? But you're running a company, you're, uh, you're traveling a lot, and you're still finding the time to make your own superfood chocolate at home, right? What, what sort of advice do you have to people out there who might have the tendency to say I'm too busy for this or uh or or it's not for me how, how do you manage to be super healthy and get all this stuff done at the same time well I think three things and first one we already discovered make it fun mm -hmm. as I mean I can go to to, to the deep end and all of this woo -woo stuff as long as it's fun but the moment it, 
I stress out about it, yeah. I'm going too far. Like yeah. I got to take two steps back, you know, I've gone. So make it fun, whatever. If chocolate is fun for you, if, you know. It is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so do that. <laughs> Second part, which is a little bit more of a lifestyle thing, nothing to really help, but like you, you, you got to stop been watching Game of Thrones on Saturday and yeah. take 13 hours of that. Like, I mean, I haven't had TV in I think two, 12 years or something like that. That's that you don't have to go that extreme, but yeah. just be honest with yourself. You probably uh, also the time spent on Facebook. You can do like apps like Rescue Time to get mm-hmm. real honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. It's like how many hours did I do Facebook this week or whatever the thing is. Yeah, that's like just got to be honest with yourself because once you remove that, you know, binge binge watching of House of Cards or Game of Thrones or whatever is the latest show. Yeah. Free up a lot of time, sure. a lot of time, sure. and also social media can be a real bummer. So, be honest with yourself. And then the third part is, <clears throat> um, which is I think also very fascinating is, is accepting that it's like a journey, like mm-hmm. and appreciating it, like foraging. Mm-hmm. Like people are like, oh, I don't know foraging. Like I don't know what to do or go there. Like just, just go for a walk in the forest. Like yeah. the point is the walk in the forest, and if you find something. That's cool. Or the point is to meet up with your friend and instead of meeting in a cafe and sitting down, do a walking meeting, walking date and go for a forest. And like you and I mean, look, in a lot of places in the U.S., you can go you can forage in Central Park Mm -hmm. in New York City. You can do Prospect Park. You can get like awesome mushrooms and herbs there as well. Just go and explore. You don't have to eat any of them. Don't think of it as like an objective. Like it's like so there's a difference between efficiency and effectiveness mm-hmm. a lot of people are just focused on it's like a pride it's like a like a medal of honor that you carry that i worked 16 hours like right. what were those good 16 hours you know and once you i mean you have your own business you become very honest with yourself as you know like mm-hmm. are you doing a good job when mm-hmm. you're sometimes employed with somebody else you can kind of like hide away right and kind of like wiggle with it but um yeah those are my three things i love that i love that well um where can people find you and what are you working on next Tara? Um, yeah, I'm really bad with the social media. I'm not on Facebook. Why not? I have like a awful Instagram. Got, you're following your own advice then. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that was not because of that. Anyway, um, our company is Four Sigmatic. So you can go to uh, foursigmatic.com, F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com. Uh, if this got you excited, I think one of the coolest things we, we're working on, we're still in beta, but we have a Mushroom Academy. So we're trying to because I've been answering these same questions so many times over, yeah. and we're just trying to find something. It's 100% free. There's like you don't have to pay for anything, but just educating the one-on-one and mushrooms. And we're now in beta. If you could join and give us feedback, we're doing next version this summer in Finland. So, um, so definitely, if if any feedback would be awesome, and and obviously free information. We have I think 12 videos up now and a lot awesome. of resources. So that's probably useful. Cool. Well, and uh, paleo effects. If if this comes out before, if you're in paleo effects or any of these events, come say hi. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, well, I can't wait to meet you in person. And uh, th- this was super fun. I think that there's a lot that people can learn from, you know, incorporating things that might seem a little bit scary at first into their diet, into their habits, into their supplementation regime, because it's all about following that journey and finding these new exciting things that you know our ancestors knew about that we have long forgotten and and working those back into our habits and our lives. So thank you so much for coming on. We'll have to have you back again soon. Thanks, man. Thanks again for listening to Fat Burning Man. Don't forget, before you go, check out fatburningtribe.com. If you have a question for me that you want answered about how to improve your performance, what to eat for dinner, how to drop fat quickly, how to improve your overall health, or anything else, we answer all of your questions there. So quickly, you can get the first month for just $1 for a limited time. Check it out at fatburningtribe.com. All right, I'll see you there. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Fat Burning Man. If you liked it, Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the podcast app, or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. Got a second? Please leave me a quick review on iTunes. I always love hearing from you, and if you think someone else might like and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or with a family member. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at FatBurnMan, And Facebook by typing in Abel James or Fat Burning Man. Drop me a line. 
anytime. Did you know that I've recorded over 150 episodes of Fat Burning Man, winning four awards in independent media and hitting number one in more than eight countries? And here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode for free. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. I'll give you a second to type it in, fatburningman.com. And you'll get all the show notes and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of Fat Burning Man. Better yet, enter your best email at fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide to start burning fat right now and a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free fat burning download straight to your inbox and make sure that you never miss a show again. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week. Uh, people you know, getting promotions, finding the dream job, um, publishing their first book. I mean, just it, just incredible stories like that. Yeah. And the point is that they were already doing affirmations just